I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take a seat. This Sunday, we and a good portion of the rest of the Western Church mark the Feast of Christ the King, also known as the Feast of the Reign of Christ. It is a relatively new Christian festival with its origins coming just about a century ago when it was instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925. This festival is a time when we as members of the church affirm our citizenship in the kingdom of God and we acknowledge Christ's reign over all empires, kingdoms, systems, and structures particularly those empires and kingdoms, those systems and structures that do not hunger or thirst after righteousness and instead tolerate and even foster injustice, violence, and cruelty. This is also the last Sunday of the liturgical calendar, marking an end to ordinary time for a new church year begins next week with the first Sunday of Advent. And as we are about to leave one year behind and embrace a new year, it is, I think, appropriate to look back on the year that is ending and look forward to the year that is about to begin. Today's scripture lessons are designed to stimulate our reflection on what it means on a very practical level, to proclaim Jesus as Lord and Christ as King as we reflect on the past year and the year to come. Our reading from Ephesians describes the resurrected Jesus enthroned at God's right hand in the heavenly places. It is there where Jesus reigns supreme far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, as the writer of Ephesians puts it, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that age to come. The reign, this reign of Christ described in Ephesians is one that is exercised not just in the heavenly places, not just beyond our earthly conceptions of space and time, but also in the material lives of the followers of Jesus in the present, as we see elsewhere in the letter. For example, we see in the next chapter in Ephesians how God's power through the reign of Christ is at work in the lives of the followers of Jesus, equipping them, as the writer puts it, in Christ Jesus for good works. But with our reading from Ephesians in view, let's focus in on our gospel story from St. Matthew, where we also see this picture of the reign of Christ being lived out in the lives of his followers. In today's gospel, we see Jesus tell the story of the final judgment when he, as the coming Son of Man, will be seated on his kingly throne at the end of time. All the nations will be gathered before him, Jesus says, and he will separate people from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep on his right, the righteous ones, will inherit eternal life in the everlasting kingdom of God, for they were the ones who ministered to Christ himself in feeding the hungry giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, and visiting the sick and the imprisoned. And those on his left, the goats, will inherit an eternal punishment, for they ignored the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. Today's reading from St. Matthew is unparalleled in the other Gospels. It is only in Matthew where we encounter this story of final judgment with the image of sheep and goats being separated 
before the enthroned Son of Man. Today's gospel is also a confronting reminder of what counts in the end and at the end and what matters to our Lord Jesus. And as confronting as the reading is, it's equally surprising. Those on his right and those on his left act surprised in their question. Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? The first readers, and perhaps all readers since, have been surprised that in this gospel reading, it's not the waters of baptism or a confession of faith that are the criteria for membership in the kingdom of God. There is no mention of conversion, of grace, of justification, of the forgiveness of sins here. As one commentator put it, instead, what counts is whether one has acted with loving care for needy people. Today's gospel reading from St. Matthew needs to be understood in light of other parts of the gospel, in light of the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. And today's gospel also needs to be read alongside of the great commandment in Matthew, where Jesus affirms the most important obligations of his followers. Love your neighbor as yourself. Thus, the actions described in today's gospel, to the least of these, are a duty of care informed by and connected to Jesus' Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount and his great commandment. But let's dig a little deeper. In today's gospel, we also learn that our King Jesus not just identifies with but is also to be found among those on the margins, the hungry, the refugee, the poor, the sick, the the incarcerated, people who Jesus calls the least of these. This is one of the confronting paradoxes of today's gospel reading, that the King Jesus, enthroned in glory at God's right hand, is found most apparently in those without any status, power, privilege, or standing. And along with this, we learn that God's kingdom, where Christ reigns as Lord, brings with it particular responsibilities for its citizens, responsibilities to address the real and physical needs of those on the margins, the least of these, in feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, in welcoming the stranger and the refugee, in clothing the naked, tending to the sick and visiting those in prison. In fact, these responsibilities are not optional. For again, as we see in our reading, this is what counts. As Martin Luther King once said, Any religion which professes to be concerned with the souls of people, but is not concerned with the slums that damn them, the economic conditions that cripple them, such a religion is a dry-as-dust religion. So as our church year comes to an end, Christ the King Sunday is a time for us to look backwards, but also look ahead. It is a time for us to evaluate how authentically we are living our lives as citizens of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Have we lived as authentic citizens of the kingdom of God this past year? If no, what changes will we make? What 
New Year's resolutions, if you will, do we have for the next year that begins next week, the first Sunday of Advent? 2020 has, of course, been dominated first by the awful bushfires here in Australia, but then the tragic and ongoing coronavirus pandemic that has killed millions and has impacted every citizen of the world in one way or another. In 2020, we have seen both the worst and the best of humanity. But as we look back over this year, we need to ask ourselves, where have we seen the face of Christ in 2020? Today's reading reminds us that we see the face of Christ, especially in those acutely impacted by the pandemic. Of course, the sick, especially those who have died alone in hospital, but also in the refugee who is now unwelcome due to closed borders, in those made hungry due to the loss of a job, in the homeless person who can no longer rely on the random kindness of strangers due to the empty streets of the CBD, in the victim of domestic violence, in those who are lonely and suffering from depression due to the lockdowns. So the question for us now to consider is, have we, as followers of Christ in the year 2020, faithfully lived out the responsibilities and obligations to which our Lord and King Jesus calls us? But let's also look ahead. Generally speaking, there seems to be a, a cautious optimism for a number of people for 2021. It can only get better after all. In Melbourne, there is a particular hopefulness sustained by the steady easing of lockdown restrictions. But on this reign of Christ Sunday, as we transition into a new year, we need to remember our, our obligations as followers of Jesus in 2021 and in all years. Obligations that matter eternally, obligations especially to the poor, to the marginalized, to the refugee, to the victim of injustice and racism, to the unemployed. If we want 2021 to be a year where we see Christ reign in a world that doesn't seem to have much space for justice and thirsting for righteousness, then we need to faithfully meet our obligations as citizens of the kingdom of Jesus, where he reigns as Lord over all. So my prayer for all of us, as we look back to 2020 and as we look ahead to 2021, is that we would never forget the good work to which our Lord Jesus calls all of us, especially with the least of these. On this Christ the King Sunday, may the reign of our Lord Jesus be seen in both earthly and heavenly realms. And may our prayer always be, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.